I think sugar is a white poison. It, I think we should treat it like arsenic. I am very serious about that. And when you read this history of sugar, which is a couple of books out now, it's horrible. I mean, we enslave tens of thousands of people so that people in Europe could eat sugar or put sugar in their teeth. I mean, what's that about? I mean, really, <laughs> it's, it's not a very healthy product. It's, it's, its value is about 1% of, of its uses, meaning that if somebody were having an insulin shock, they'd want sugar. You know, but even then they could eat an orange and get their sugar back up. So to me, sugar is, is, a, is a mistake. Yeah, I mean a teaspoon a week or a day, maybe, maybe. For some kids, they definitely eat it and then crash. That's what would happen to me. So you get a child who's reactive and they, and they eat a Pop-Tart for breakfast, either at home or at school. And then an hour later, once their insulin has kicked in, their sugar crashes and they feel like junk. They, you know, they can't concentrate, squirm, they feel nauseous, they feel anxious. And then what's the, what's the rescue for that? More sugar. They'll come in and say that they get headaches all day or they feel tired on and off all day. And I'll say, so what do you do? And then they'll, they'll describe this yo-yo. Well, what do you eat for breakfast? Well, I have a bowl of, you know, Captain Crunch. My favorite cereal, by the way. Never eat it, but it's really good. And, and then an hour later, they're eating something else because they're, they're starting to feel weak. And so they kind of yo-yo. And, and for an adult, you had coffee. You know, like one of the worst combos to me is like, two teaspoons of sugar and a, and a cup of coffee. Because the caffeine drives the sugar into the blood faster. It delivers the, the sugar right into the bloodstream. And so it gets in faster, the insulin kicks in faster, the insulin drives the sugar down, and then they bottom out. And so they don't realize what they're doing, they, they yo-yo, whether they drink Red Bull or just coffee with sugar and all day long. And once they can figure out that they can really get off this stuff, obviously they can, but it is kind of a drug, then they're okay. Yeah. So there you have it. That is the little white substance that I said we'd be talking about tonight, and I told you it wasn't what you were going to be expecting. Baby powder. Baby powder! Yes. I wish it was, because you know, I am a sugar addict, Brian. So we have Brian Weimer in the house, sugar daddy. So uh, Brian, let's talk about, first of all, what makes you sugar daddy besides your good looks and your boatloads of money? Oh, uh, <laughs> I, I, I got kind of cajoled into this uh, to really figure out. I mean, I, I'm a bit of a skeptic and there's a lot of science out there that you can go either way on. And there are a lot of new dietary ideas and you know, it's like in the 70s, like we took all the fat off the chicken and whatever. Right. So every decade there's something new. And, and now the new thing is, uh, you know, whether what's killing us is sugar. And it's kind of a no brainer. I mean, everybody knows that sugar's not good for you, but we have this, this sort of love affair with sugar. So we don't want to give it up. Right. And, and for me, it's just to say, okay, well, how bad is it? How bad could it be? I mean, we all ate like, crap when we were kids and mm -hmm. you know we uh, had sugary cereals and lollipops and Tootsie Rolls and all that stuff and it all evokes nostalgia in our mm -hmm. heads of you know Christmas and and Cartoons. cookies and oh yeah all that stuff. Eating all Captain Crunch in front of the TV. I'm getting the form fuzzies already. Right. But but was all that stuff hurting us and is it hurting us now and if you look at some very basic statistics and I don't even like statistics too much just that one in three kids now is either overweight or obese. Epidemic proportions. And, and there's another stat that kids born after the year 2000, half of them, when they grow up, they will be diabetic. I mean, and that's huge. I mean, diabetes, I, I, I don't have diabetes in my family. I don't really, haven't experienced it. But you might get I've it read, after this experiment. Mm, uh, but I mean, it's a terrible way to go. It's mm. like up there with lung cancer. It's like you lose legs, you go blind. You, it's crappy. It, and it's slow and it's debilitating. It's not a car wreck. It's not whatever. It, it sucks. Um, so, and, and, and is that really what we're looking at in the future? And is that a good thing? So, so basically, I looked at what adolescents were eating now. Now, the average adolescent eats somewhere between 24 and 36 
added teaspoons of sugar a day. That's, there, there's, there's sugar in fruit, there's sugar in all sorts of things, but this is added sugar. This is like the stuff they put in Pop-Tarts and cereals and Coke and all that other kind of stuff. Right. So, so in the, on the ingredients label, right. that's where you would see the sugar grams, but then you look in the ingredients and see... Like, it's in the gram, yeah, and, and it's usually just in grams. There are four grams per teaspoon of sugar. Um, so if you see something and it says it has 32 grams, that means eight teaspoons of sugar. Wow. So if you look on a Coca-Cola and it says in this eight ounce can, it has 32 grams of sugar. It means in that can, there are eight teaspoons of sugar. And to me, that's alarming. Who would, it's it just kind of nuts. Actually, I was looking at a Frappuccino, a little Frappuccino, that thing's like nine ounces. It has, I believe it's eight teaspoons of sugar. In it. If you saw somebody going to the coffee shop and they get their little cup of coffee, pour in a little cream, and start putting in the packets of sugar. We actually measured out the packets. It takes 12 packets of sugar to equal a frappuccino. If you saw somebody oh going goodness. past three, you're like, you got a sweet tooth. If you go past five, you're like, hey, what's up with that? If you get past 10, you're like, you're calling the cops. 12 packets, but we're doing that every day. And to me, it's not to say, that, hey, stop. It's just like, wow, what am I doing to just myself? Just acknowledge, notice. Right. So I'm eating uh, an additional 30 teaspoons of sugar every day. And that's kind of what the average adolescent is doing. And people say, oh, well, you're not an average adolescent. They're active. They've got soccer practice and blah, blah, blah. It's not true. Uh, the average adolescent uh, or actually only 26% of adolescents get a moderate amount of exercise, that's breaking a sweat, that's a fast walk. Hmm. Only 26%. So the majority of them out there, they're playing video games, they're just kind of hanging out and whatever. So, and I'm active, I run, uh, I used to eat well. Um, <laughs> well, let's, let's, let's talk about the specifics. So you're a filmmaker, mm. documentarian, mm. here you are doing this experiment for six weeks mm -hmm. where you're taking in 30 teaspoons right. of sugar, which equals 120, 120, 120 grams. 20 grams of sugar a right. day, which right. represents the average adolescent. Right. Why? Why? Why not? I mean, I, I'd have enough you... to do this month, and I need a lot of sugar. <laughs> no, you don't have enough to do. No, but is it not true that there, there, it's sort of there's sort of um, the schools involved, and let's talk. Well, well, let's talk about that a little bit. The problem it started here. How it affects um, Charlottesville? Yeah, uh, my wife Ivana Kadia, uh, who you know well, um, is has been uh, the chair of the health advisory board at the city schools. Right. And she's been trying to get them to reduce sugar, and and frankly. They've been really reluctant to. They're like, no, no, we can't do that. Right now, check this out. The schools, by USDA regulations, are allowed to make the diet 35% sugar by weight. 35% of the food can be sugar. Who just says that's sugar. okay? And they're like, well, this is, Why? And actually, is it cheaper? No, no, well, 35%, once you go past that, you start dying. Under that, you're like, okay, you're not killing yourself exactly. The ideal percentage is about 10%. That's what the World Health Organization says. Wow. But we go, oh, the USDA says 35%, that's all right. And to me, that just sounds nuts. The problem is you have things like chocolate milk and stuff like that that just seem like, oh, it's part of school. You can't take that away from the kids because, again, we have a love affair with sugar. And mm -hmm. sugar to us equals love. It's how we show affection. You give a box of chocolates, mm -hmm. you give a chocolate milk, you give a Tootsie you Roll or a Jolly Rancher. You treat someone when they've done something right. right. And if you say, we're taking away the cupcakes, it's like you canceled Christmas. It's like, people, well, you can't do that. But if you look at it, a kid in the morning will have pancakes and syrup. We saw a kid in a cafeteria drinking the syrup from his pancake and chasing it with chocolate milk. <laughs> Now you can have that for lunch too. You can have French toast for lunch and do the same thing and a lot of the other stuff. And then they have a snack bar where you can get ice cream and stuff like that. They might not now, but does that help them learn? In this town, they didn't pass their SOLs last year. It's not to say, oh, well, sugar was the problem, but sugar it's is be one a of the problem. Pro yeah, it's gonna and, be one of the problems. And that was one of the bigger things too. We talked to neurologists, we talk, to, we talk to people who are probation officers. Across the board, people say that there's a behavioral problem. And actually, that's what I'm experiencing now. I have a neurologist and a psychologist looking at team. me for eight, I have actually six doctors. I have a endocrinologist, I have an osteopath, a neurologist, a psychologist, a nutrition wow. expert, and a fitness expert. 
and they're all watching me, and I'm falling apart. I mean, I am exhibiting ADHD-like behavior or ADD-like behavior. I can't complete tasks. I can't focus. I, can't, I procrastinate. I can't listen to people. And if you think about all these things, this is what you and I, this is how we function in the world. Mm -hmm. And that's when we look at kids. If you put them in school, wow, they can't function. They can't hear. They can't complete tasks. They don't do can't assignments. Sit still. How does that help them? And to me, and it's been documented before, you know, clinically, but now I'm the guinea pig. And, I'm all over it. I, I really, I lose my keys every single day wow. now. So do, do they do a baseline test on yes. you? Did they do a, I think in the clip in White Poison, was that your first test, that, set of tests? That was, yeah, I was starting to get my blood test then. That was uh, my Dr. Gelbert, he is the uh, osteopath. And obviously he had a very strong opinion about sugar. And I'm coming into it like, I like Cap'n Crunch. I like brownies. I like Ice Ben & Jerry's. Uh -huh. I love all of this stuff. I'm willing to give it up if it's killing me, but you know, well, I want some proof. And, and actually I found out that it is killing me. I got my, my uh, blood test back after two weeks. Uh, just, this is my third week now. I just got my blood test back Friday and uh, I'm pre-diabetic. You've got to be kidding me. Yeah. And there was no sign of it before. No, I, I don't have diabetes in my family. How far are you into this experiment, Brian? I'm now three weeks. And that was two weeks ago. I don't know where I am now. And I, frankly, I'm losing feeling in my feet. <laughs> what are you, so are you, I mean, are you going to call it quits? I don't know. I, I think you should. I, 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 I think every, your point is being, is being proven. <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm not dead yet. The, the, <laughs> the, 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 I'm also, die for my art. It, it, it's what they call metabolic syndrome when your metabolism, your pancreas goes into distress, your liver, your kidneys, and then they start break, they start not functioning. And I'm kind of on the edge of that not functioning. So right now I'm pre-diabetic. So Is I it get, reversible? Oh yeah, I mean, and that, that's part of what we're gonna try to prove too. Try to Which prove, is good news, nice? right? That yeah. it is reversible. So basically you quit the sugar and you quit the carbs because a big thing about it too, not to get into big dietary science, carbs and sugar. They are synonymous. Carbs are saccharides. Saccharides, it's, they're sugars, pure and simple. That's new news to me. Yeah, so, and that's how they, uh, there's a lot of people are being cured of diabetes by cutting out their carbs. And that's the big thing is that we're a carb heavy country. You have potatoes and pasta and rice, as well as the sugars, as well as everything else. And, and it's, it's killing us. It's killing me. I'm dying. And, 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 and I don't need to. No. But the big thing too is we're trying to actually get, we have a campaign up to chuck the chocolate milk. Right now the Dairy Board has a million dollar campaign for raise your hand for chocolate milk so that kids can buy more chocolate milk so they can make more money, it's awful. So we're doing this chuck the chocolate milk campaign and actually as part of it because it's like, wow, you guys are gonna be going with, through withdrawal. Ivana kind of, she's running for school board on a health is academic platform it's to say, she, does, she wants to be a role model, and she doesn't want kids going, well, you're a smoker. Well, what the heck? So her. she quit smoking, but she's like, look, if, I'm gonna, if you guys are going to go through you know, chocolate, chocolate milk, I'll quit the cigarettes. Tell me what you plan on doing with this documentary, and, and where do you go after? I mean, I'm really curious to know if you're going to cut this short and, and now try to reverse it. I think that would be a really interesting, instead of taking it the whole six weeks. Right. I, I, I have to check with my doctors and see how the, I'm going to do one more round of blood tests. And I'm still like, I just came back from the airport, and I had a Cinnabon last night, and I felt like I was going to shoot myself. But it just, it just kills me. I mean, I know I'm, I'm part of the thing, but I'm getting to crave it now. And my mood swings are just like that. I just like, I need a Pop-Tart and I need a bowl of Cap'n Crunch and I need, but the scary thing is too, it's not just the kiddie stuff, the adult stuff, the adult cereals are worse. Raisin Bran has twice the sugar of Cap'n Crunch. So you have a wonderful blog that I've been following. Right. Um, can you give us the It's the on blog? WordPress. It's Sugar Daddy Movie. You can also look on Facebook, Sugar Daddy Movie. And you can keep up with how I'm killing myself uh, with sugar. <laughs> and hopefully reversing the effects. And we will. Part of it is really how we turn this around. And we will hopefully show, I mean, a lot of these doctors are very dedicated to turning my blood work around. I mean, I am pre-diabetic. Perhaps I'm even diabetic now. I don't know from the last time. Um, I mean, I, I feel like, I, I really feel like crud. Um, and I, I wanna get back, I've always got a million projects, so I can't function like this. Yeah. I don't know how anybody can. So for me, it's just to prove that there's an issue here. Plus there are lots of anecdotal issues about 
you know, what does chocolate milk do or frappuccino? I mean, to me, it's not just like, let's just uh, demonize sugar. It's to really have a balanced approach about it and say, I like sugar. Sugar's gonna be part of our world, but is it this much? Well, thank you for taking one for the team. Mm. Um, it's really educational and, and entertaining because you're such an entertaining fellow. Um, so I, I, really do, um, I, I really do suggest that people keep track of, of Brian's blog. I'm really interested to find out how you begin to reverse the process and any resources to understand how to get the energy without the sugar would be great too. And I'm sure you've got stuff like that. On and important too is voting on November 8th. Yes, I mean, why, there's say, a why school don't you board do, election. do a, There's do a, a school board election as well as city council. November 8th, please vote for Ivana Kadia. She's trying to make the schools healthy. She's is, got is, I mean, who can disagree kids with that? Your interests at heart, yeah. best interests at heart. Well, that's wonderful. That's a really great note to end on, actually. So, Excellent. Brian, well, you, you kind of heard it here first that he's pre-diabetic. I, I don't know whether to, I don't know how to feel about that. Yeah, Except, yeah well, no, I mean, you're, you're making your point. Hmm. So just make sure that you take care of yourself from here on out. But thank you for coming so much. Thank you for letting me be here for my you're last, my, you're my, my last, my last interview. <laughs> no, you're my favorite guest. So thank you for coming, Brian. And Thanks. keep us posted. Um, so, wow. Coming up next, we have our new feature, our new little section of the show, what's going on in your world. So stay tuned for that. And then we're going to take the show out with another awesome song from Holly Allen. So we will see you next time and spread the word.